For our next section, we are still looking at factoring. However, notice what we are factoring. We are factoring x squared plus bx plus c. So we are going to be factoring trinomials. I see three terms there. There is a squared term a plain term, and then a constant. So to factor a polynomial of that form, we will need to find two integers, so two numbers, p and q. We will look at them adding to b. So we want to write and not move it. So we want to add to b, and then multiply to C. And we'll see here in a second why that is what it is. So I start with x squared plus bx plus c. Factoring means I want separated by multiplication, factor 1, factor 2. So my goal is going to be to find these numbers p and q. Well, how are we going to find those? Well, let's think about what we have done in the past when I had two binomials multiplying. I would FOIL. So let's look at what we would get if we FOILed these two. So x times x is x squared. My outer is x times q, but again, q is going to be a number, so I'll write that as qx, because it will be the coefficient on x. My middle terms, px, again, p will be a number, so I'm going to write that as px, and then my last terms, p times q, would be pq, or qp, order doesn't matter for multiplication there. So if I look at, usually we would combine like terms for foiling. Here's an x term, here's another x term. Now, although we can't actually combine p and q, those are really going to be numbers, so eventually we will. I can at least group them together and say that that's going to be p plus q as the coefficient on x. Well, if this, by this trinomial has to equal the trinomial that I started with, like parts have to be the same. x squared has to equal x squared. The coefficient on x, the b, has to equal the coefficient on x, p plus q. So b will be p plus q. Whereas c is the constant, the plain number, has to equal the plain number on the end. That's why we need to add to b, multiply to c. c is going to be our driving force. c is what is going to tell us what factors to use. So we need to first find factors of C. If C is positive, that means two numbers are multiplying to get a positive value. Well, think of what combinations of numbers you could have. You can have a positive times a positive and equal a positive, or you could have two negatives that equal a, po or that equal a positive. Therefore, if C is positive, the signs will be the same. Well, now look at what your middle term B is, because not only do we have to multiply to C, we then need to add to B. What does that mean we need to do then? We need to pay attention then to what sign B has. If B is positive, then I need those two numbers to add to a positive they would both be positive. If that b is negative, these two need to add to a negative, which means they better both be negative. However, if c is negative, how can you multiply two numbers and end up with a negative product? The signs have to be opposites of one another. One has to be positive, the other has to be negative. So p and q would have different signs. Just a little bit of a hint in terms of what you should be expecting to see. What we're going to look at doing, first and foremost, well, what are C and B? Then I want to look at what are two factors of C? What numbers can I multiply to get to my C? Of those factors that multiply to C, I need them to add to B. Once you know what numbers those are, drop them into sets of parentheses with whatever your squared term is. Pay attention to what variable it is. That's always what comes first in those sets of parentheses. You can always check factoring by foiling. 
So some examples that I have done for you. My first thing I notice is C is 2, B is 3. I need two numbers that multiply to 2. Well, 2, I can only get to that with 1 times 2. Well, that's good because 1 plus 2 is 3. So positive 1, positive 2. FOIL, x squared plus 2x plus 1x would be plus 3x plus 2. That is exactly what you started with. If I come down to this second one, my C is negative, or excuse me, my B is negative 2. My C is negative 8. So I need to multiply to negative 8. 4 times negative 2, negative 2 times positive 4, negative 8 times 1, 8 times negative 1, different combinations. Well, what of those factors can get me to negative 2? Well, no combination of 8 and 1, however, 4 and 2. Which one needs to be negative then? Would be negative 4 plus 2, or 2 minus 4, same thing. The 2 is positive, the 4 is negative. So x plus 2 times x minus 4. Again, FOIL, and that will get you back to where you started. So FOILing can be used to check our answers to these problems. Looking over there to the x squared plus 7x minus 18. My B is 7. My C is negative 18. So I need two numbers to multiply to negative 18 and add to 7. 16 has more, or 18 has more factors. 1 times 18, 2 times 9, 3 times 6, and uh, 2 times 9. What of those would we want to use to get 7? 1 and 18 not getting us to 7. 3 and 6 not getting us to 7. 2 and 9, yes, it would be 9 minus 2. The 9 is positive, the 2 is negative. 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. 9 plus negative 2 is a positive 7. And I save that uh, next one for last for a reason. I have B is negative 5, C is positive 6. Factors of 6, 3 times 2, and 6 times 1. Well, both of those can get me to negative 5. I can do negative 3 plus negative 2 or negative 6 plus 1. How do I know which one of those to use then? Think about multiplying. Negative 3 times negative 2, positive 6? Yes. Negative 6 times positive 1? would be negative 6. That one's no good. That's why I chose the negative 3 and the negative 2. That is what gets us our product to be what we want it and need it to be there. So C is the driving force. What are the factors of C? Now from those factors of C, which of those will add to B? little puzzle. For number one, let's identify B and C. B is 11. C is 28. So let's think about some factors of 28. 1 times 28, 2 times 14, 4 times 7. Now which of those factors adds to 11? It is 7 and 4. Both positive. So x plus 7 and x plus 4. Well, what if I have students ask me, well, could I have done x plus 4 times x plus 7? Absolutely. Your multiplying order does not matter. Doesn't matter if you had the plus 7 first or the plus 4 first. As long as you have x plus 7 and x plus 4 in there, you're good. Number two, B this time is negative 4, C is 3. Factors of 3, 1 times 3, that's it. To get to negative 4, well then something needs to be negative. Oh, we can use negative 1 times negative 3. Negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3, and negative 1 plus negative 3 is negative 4. So both the 1 and the 3 are both negative. Again, you can FOIL to double check. Does that get you to where you started? If so, you're good. If not, you did not factor correctly. 
Jumping up there to number five. Watch this time it's T. It's not going to change what we do other than instead of putting X first in those sets of parentheses, we are going to put T first. B is negative 10. C is 21. So I need to multiply to 21, add to negative 10. Think about some factors of 21. Do any of those add to negative 10? Since 21 is positive, the signs have to be positive, so that we have either both positives or both negatives. To get to a negative sum, you need to be negative. So we decide factors of positive 21 that get us to negative 10 are negative 7 and negative 3. Negative 7 times negative 3 is a positive 21. Negative 7 plus negative 3 is our negative 10. Again, watch its t, so make sure t gets in there first. Minus 7 and minus 3. Again, order doesn't matter. You could have done minus 3, then the minus 7. Foil that, you get back to where you started. For number 6, my b is negative 16, my c is 63. I need two numbers that multiply to 63, add to negative 16. Since I'm positive, signs are the same. I need to get to a negative number, so these will both be minuses. So I'll have x minus and x minus. Factors of 63. Think for a second about some factors of 63. What of those can get you to negative 16? Negative 7 times negative 9. Negative 7 times negative 9 is a positive 63. Negative 7 plus negative 9 is negative 16. For number 9, my b is 13, my c is 36. So I need two numbers that multiply to 36 and add to 13. Multiplying to a positive and then adding to a positive means we'll have two positive numbers. So think about some factors of 36. 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, 6 and 6. What of those get us to 13, 4, and 9? Watch this time we have W, so W plus 4, W plus 9. And last one in this set, x squared minus 4x plus 4. I need to multiply to positive 4, add to negative 4. Factors of 4, 2 and 2, 4 and 1. Of those, what can get us to negative 4? Since C is positive, the signs are the same. To get to a negative, they both need to be negative. So I have x and x back, both again going to be negative. Factors of 4 that get to negative 4, 2 and 2. Negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4, and negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Again, C runs the show has the first say. Factors of C that add to B. Don't look at B until you worry about C. Worry about C first. Think about what factors you have first, then worry about them adding to, to B. All of the ones that you see on your screen right now all have C being positive, which means the signs in the two sets of parentheses are positive. In between, in each binomial, they are the same. Therefore, B then dictates what sign they are. Positive, positive. These are then both positive. C's positive, they're the same, both negatives. C's positive makes them the same, both negative because B is negative. All of those follow that same pattern. Now if we look ahead at the next couple, what we'll notice, 11 being the exception, is that all of these have C being negative. So in number 3, my B is negative 3, my C is negative 10. That means my signs are going to be different in each one of these. Back to X's, so I'll have X and X. I need to multiply to negative 10, so think about some factors of 10. Which of those can add to negative 3? 10 and 1, not getting you to 3. Negative 3. 5 and 2, yeah. But 5 
needs to be negative, so 3 can be negative. Negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. And negative 5 times positive 2 is negative 10. If C is negative, the signs are different. In number 4, my B is really 1. My C is negative 6. I need factors of negative 6 that add to a positive 1. Back to X's again. Factors of negative 6, positive 1. Positive 3, negative 2. 3 minus 2 is 1. 3 times negative 2 is the negative 6. In number 7, I need to multiply to negative 8. That's my C. Add to negative 2. That's my B. So think of factors of negative 8. What of those can add to negative 2? This time my variable is Y, so that's going first. It would be negative 4 and positive 2. Negative 4 times positive 2 is negative 8. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. In number 8, I need to multiply to negative 16, add to 6. Back to X's, so X first in our sets of parentheses. Factors of negative 16, two numbers that multiply to negative 16 that add to positive 6, 4 and 4, 8 and 2, 16 and 1, would be 8 and 2. How do I get to positive 6? A positive 8 minus 2. 8 times negative 2 is negative 16. 8 minus 2 is positive 6. C is negative. In all of these, my signs are different, a positive and a negative, a positive and a negative. Again, it does not matter what order those sets of parentheses are in. However, make sure the signs are what they should be. Not x plus 5 and x minus 2. No, it has to be minus 5 and plus 2. It could have been x plus 2 times x minus 5. Number 11 there, just to finish off with it, C is a positive 4, which means the signs will be the same. To get to a positive in the middle, they both will be positive. Factors of 4 that add to 5, not 2 and 2. However, 4 and 1 will get us to 5. Again, you can FOIL all of these. If you FOIL them and get back to what you started with, you're good. If you do not get the trinomial you started with, your factors are not correct. Go back and double check to make sure you actually multiply to C and that those two then add to B. Remember, the whole reason we factor is to solve equations. The only thing those problems did for us was to give us practice with factoring. Well, now we're actually going to put those into equations. No equal signs in those original problems that we've had. They weren't equations. They can't be solved. Notice the problems that we're going to look at next all have equal signs. Makes them equations. We need to solve them. The first thing, what do we need to always set these equations equal to? It is zero. Remember, it is the zero product property. It's not the 15 product property. It's not the 40 product property. Zero. We need to set equations equal to zero. Well, then the second word in there is product, which means we need some multiplication. Factoring produces multiplication. Therefore, the next thing we will do is factor that polynomial. Once we have that polynomial factored, we will set each factor equal to zero and solve. This is directly copied and pasted from the notes from the last section because it's the exact same steps for solving. The process of factoring was different in the last section. We had a greatest common factor. The process for factoring different now. However, the steps to solve are the same. Get that equation equal to zero. Factor it. Different methods for factoring. Set each factor equal to zero and solve. In number one, the problem is it doesn't equal zero. I will subtract that 15 to get it set equal to zero. So I will have x squared plus 2x minus 15. We typically want the squared term first. We want that variable to the first power in the middle and then the constant at the end. The other thing we want with that trinomial, we want that squared term to be positive. We want it to have a positive coefficient on it. Therefore, 
Make sure when you're moving terms from side to side to set it equal to zero, keep your squared term positive. So I would not have wanted to subtract the x squared, subtract the 2x. Now, my b is 2, my c is negative 15. I have x, so that's going to go first in my sets of parentheses. Factors of negative 15 that add to 2, positive 2, would be positive 5 and negative 3. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. 5 plus negative 3 is 2. Now that we have it factored, set each one of those factors equal to 0 and solve. X plus 5, we would subtract 5. 0 minus 5 is negative 5. Here we would add 3. 0 plus 3 is 3. Our two solutions, X is either negative 5 or it is 3. In number 2, to get that equal to 0, notice my Y squared is positive, so I need to move everything to the left, which means this negative 13 Y needs to be added. Typically, that variable to the first power goes in the middle so that is where I will put it in my trinomial start with the squared term y squared standard form plus 13 y minus 30 it will now equal 0 my b is 13 my c is negative 30 I need factors of negative 30 two numbers to multiply to negative 30 that add to 13 variables y this time, so I'll have y first. Factors of negative 30 that add to 13. Watch, 10 and 3. Well, 10 plus 3 is 13. However, to be negative, my signs have to alternate. No good then. Be careful. We need our factors for 30 negative 30. One has to be positive, one has to be negative to get to 13. How about positive 15 and negative 2? So be careful there. Yes, 3 and 10 can get you to 13. However, they would both need to be positive or both negative. Well, that doesn't get you to a negative product. Now that we have it factored, set each one of those factors equal to 0 and solve. Plus 15, I would need to subtract 15, which makes that negative 15. Y minus 2, I would need to add 2. So my solution's negative 15 and 2. For the last one, we need to equal 0. Therefore, I need to get rid of that 40. Subtract 40 from both sides. The constant typically goes last. So I will have x squared minus 3x minus 40 back to having x's, so I'll put x first in my sets of parentheses. My b is negative 3, my c is negative 40. Factors of negative 40 that add to negative 3. Negative 8, positive 5. Negative 8 times 5 is negative 40. Negative 8 plus 5 is the negative 3. Set each factor equal to 0 and solve. We would need to add 8. We would need to subtract 5. So x equals 8 or negative 5 to solutions. Again, the whole reason for factoring is to solve equations. To solve equations, they need to be set equal to 0. It's the 0 product property. Once we have the equation set equal to 0, look to factor. Factoring these trinomials, we need two numbers that multiply to C and add to B. Once we have those factors, like usual, set the factors equal to 0 and solve.